which is a toy. Come on. If this video gets to a thousand likes, I will make my own scientifically fact-based 10 most dangerous insects. Hello, my beautiful and intellectually curious love bugs. Welcome back to my channel. So my name is Nancy. I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs. And normally I do tourism in Ecuador focused on insects, ecology, and all that good stuff. But obviously that's not happening. So hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Last week I decided to do a react video and y'all really liked it. So I guess I'm just going to do that again. So without further ado, let's do it. All right. So today we have 10 most dangerous insects alive today. And this is by the richest at 14.4 million subscribers. I'm not quite there yet. Although if you want to help out, feel free to like this video. I'll get there someday. Let's do this. It's been said that for every human, there are 200 million insects. With that in mind, insects heavily outweigh the human population. With those vast numbers, there's bound to be some insects that can cause a problem to us, either through their bites or stings. Nothing that he's saying here is completely uh, crazy. We compare insect numbers like this all the time. He is trying to make the point though that there's just so many insects that obviously a couple are going to be problematic, which I fundamentally agree with, but numbers of insects does not equal biodiversity and diversity of their biology and ecology. So I think something like saying the number of species or indicating the biodiversity, so there's 1.2 million insects in the planet, we think that there are 5 million, so you know, 4 million left to go to describe. <laughs> So I think that shows just like how many different kinds there are and the diversity of their biology, where they live, all of these different things. So I think that might be a better measure for this. But yes, fundamentally, I agree that there are lots of insects. So obviously a couple are going to be a problem. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the most dangerous insects in the world, as well as the insects that deliver the most painful bites and stings. Okay, so it looks like we are defining this at least partially by bites and stings. So it's nice that we have a definition because uh, if you remember last week's video, it was just like really nilly card up there. So let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. Tarantula hawk. Tarantula hawk. Tarantula hawks are part of a big group. They're part of a big family. That family is Pompilidae. There are over 5,000 tarantula hawks and spider wasps. This right here is a spider wasp, but it is not a tarantula hawk, which would be in the genus Pepsis. But just note that the ones with the most painful stings are the tarantula hawks, and those are in the genus Pepsis. Hawks are neither hawks nor tarantulas, but these five centimeter wasps do have a strong relationship with tarantulas. They hunt down the creepy crawly, then proceed to sting it. This paralyzes the tarantula. The hawk then drags the vulnerable spider into its burrow. It lays an egg on top of the spider. When the egg becomes a larva, it then consumes the still alive tarantula. It's pretty horrifying. Yes, the stuff that nightmares are made of. This is called a parasitoid. This is exactly what its biology is. Parasitoids are different than parasites. Parasites need to keep you alive because if you're alive, then they're alive and everyone is like kind of happy. I mean, you're sick, but you're both are alive. So that's pretty good. But parasitoids need to kill their host to complete their development. So in the case of the spider and spider wasps and tarantula hawks, what they do is the larva will start sucking the blood of the tarantula and then they will move on to the non-essential organs of the tarantula and finally moving on to the essential organs, keeping that paralyzed tarantula alive for as long as possible. Tarantula hawks can be found all over the world, but around 250 various tarantula hawk species are found in South America. They tend to avoid humans and are often docile, but... Good point! Yes, and nothing proves this point more, I think, than when I was in the jungle, I was wearing my headlamp. Tarantula hawk, like one of the big couple incher ones, was attracted to the headlamp and got stuck in my hair, like right here. I mean, it was a terrifying 30 seconds. They're rated uh, like a four on Schmidt's pain index. Like it was like right next to my face and like buzzing angrily. And it was like the loudest, longest 30 seconds of my life. And it just untangled itself and flew away. The end. 
If it's cornered, it will strike. Its sting is considered one of the most painful out of all the insects. It's rated highly on Dr. Justin Schmidt's Sting Pain Index. It's been said that the sting stops you from doing anything besides scream. The um, that is actually like a direct quote, so I'm glad that they did their research. So, again, I talked about this book last week. I talk about this book all the time. It's really so good. I'm not sponsored, but there is an Amazon affiliate link in the description below if you want to get it. I highly recommend it. It's very funny. Anyway, so Justin Smith specifically says in his tarantula hawk chapter, stung by a tarantula hawk? The advice I give at speaking engagements is to lie down and scream. Down four minutes, then it thankfully subsides, but it can be sore for a while afterwards. There's only one other species that Schmidt describes as more painful, but more on that later. If so Schmidt says that the tarantula hawk is very similar to the bullet ant, except the tarantula hawk lasts uh, significantly less time. If you spot a tarantula hawk in the wild, best to stay well away. And it's super easy to stay well away. They literally want nothing to do with you. Maricopa harvester ant. Maricopa harvester ants, or its Latin name, Poganomyrex maricopa, is- So this is the whole genus of harvester ants, and some have worse stings than others. Uh, again, Schmidt has a whole chapter on just harvester ants in general. It's an ant that can be found regularly in the United States, particularly in the southern states, such as Arizona. They're also found within Central America. Like a lot of ants, they are fearlessly protective of their colony. If they find someone near their nest, they will attack. However, the Maricopa harvester ant is a lot more aggressive. On top of that, not only do they have a ferocious bite, but they also have a stinger. They bite down on the victim with their mandibles, then use the stinger when they're in a good position. A so that's very common of ant biology, because if you aren't anchored, it's really easy for whatever the thing that you're stinging it to just like kind of brush you off. So they'll use their big mandibles to kind of like anchor down on you and get a good placement to deliver that sting. I'm not saying it's comfortable, I'm saying that's effective. <laughs> Stinger that is believed to contain the most toxic insect venom in the world. The most toxic insect venom to humans. And that's because most insect venom is specifically designed for arthropod prey or to make vertebrates hurt but not necessarily do any damage. Like the tarantula hawk is just releasing neurotransmitters to make you hurt a lot. Whereas the venom in the harvester ant is really interesting because it's actually breaking down blood cells, which is pretty unique among insect venom. So it's breaking down blood cells and it's also breaking down uh, muscle tissue as well. Uh, but fortunately, each harvester ant doesn't have a lot of venom in it. Still hurts though, but they don't have a lot of venom in them. So you're not gonna die or anything, unless you're allergic. I mean, if you're allergic, you can die to any of these things. It's a bit of a double threat. A single sting is said to be 20 times more potent than a honeybee. The venom also contains a pheromone that causes other ants in the area to attack. Those are called alarm pheromones. Many different arthropods have them. So ants have them, bees have them, wasps have them, even aphids have them. But in the stinging insects, these alarm pheromones are like, hey, something's here, sting the crap out of it. Where in aphids, they just like curl up into a ball and roll off their plant and land in the dirt. So you. Depends on what you need it for, but alarm pheromones are well documented in many different types of arthropods. While Maricopa harvester ants aren't usually a threat to humans, in certain situations they could be, such as a human having an allergic reaction to the ant's sting. But mostly they just cause a lot of pain. However, the pain could last up to a week. There's an interesting account of the wheelers who got stung by, or I think it was the husband, who got stung by a bullet ant on the lip. And he said after 26 days, his lip was still sensitive to the touch. So, yeah, try not to get stung by them. Just don't, like, don't stomp around on their nest and you're going to be fine. Executioner wasp. It might look like a wasp that's cosplaying in Wolverine's brown suit, but it's not something to be taken lightly. Schmidt's scale doesn't include the frighteningly named executioner wasp. Schmidt's list doesn't include the executioner wasp, but it does include three other Polistes wasps, which are the paper wasp, which is the same genus that the executioner wasp belongs to. And once you get into the genus level, most of the venom composition is pretty similar. So Schmidt doesn't specifically cover the executioner wasp, but the executioner wasp is in the genus Polistes, and he does talk about 
three other different Polistes wasps, which are your paper wasps, and he rated them on his scale between 2.5 and a 3. And when you get down to the genus level, like the types of chemicals that they're using aren't particularly different. The amounts of those chemicals may vary in the genus. So if we think back to the widows that I talked about in last week's video, then we can look and see like, oh yes, it has the same types of toxins, but it doesn't have quite as many. The concentration is slightly different, et cetera, et cetera. And that might be leading to some of those variations. We can only imagine the reason is because Schmidt hasn't experienced the sting. Also known as the Polistis carnifex, this species of paper wasp can be found in Central and South America. It's one of the largest paper wasp species in the area with a body of up to three centimeters in length. It's a pretty big wasp, it's like an inch and a half. On the plus side, it has a very small nest with between four to 13 adults with one queen to rule the hive. And okay, so that brings up an interesting point because they probably, because they're so big, they probably just have more venom in them. And that would make sense if you have a very small nest, right? So if you are like a regular yellow jacket or a regular paper wasp, you know, you have hundreds of workers to send out and sting whatever is too close to you. So each one doesn't have to be carrying a big load of venom because you can just like throw all your forces at it. However, if you have a wasp with a biology where it doesn't have a lot of workers to be able to do those stings, each one is going to have to pack a bigger punch for the same kind of protection. We can see this also in bullet ants are the most painful insect sting by various different accounts. And when you look at their biology, they also have very small colonies. Most of them are just a couple hundred individuals, but they can get up to about 2,500, but that's nothing compared to the three or four million ants you can get in some colonies like leaf cutters or in army ants up to like 20 million. So a couple thousand max is almost nothing. So if you're protecting your hive, these big bullet ants are gonna have to deliver really, really painful and toxic stings because they live and hunt and forage mainly pretty solitary. Like they're out in the canopy going up there and like, you know, living their best life away from the nest, away from other hive, away from other colony mates. If anything tries to raid the nest, the bullet ants are going to have to protect it. And so each one has a pretty potent, powerful sting. So I bet there's something similar like that happening with these wasps. In 2018, Coyote Peterson from the YouTube channel Brave Wilderness decided to find out how bad the pain really is. As soon as the venom was injected into his arm, Peterson was writhing about the floor in agony. His arm muscles began to seize as the pain turned into a burning sensation. He described the sting as the worst he's ever experienced. The area of his arm where he was stung is said to have left a scar. With a response like that, it's probably a good idea that what Schmidt didn't try this out for himself. <laughs> Coyote Peterson's YouTube channel wouldn't be nearly as successful if he stung himself with one of these arthropods and was like, all right, gonna go get breakfast, y'all, you know? Eleven minutes later. Anyway, slight rent aside. <laughs> Next. Killer bees. Africanized bees, or killer bees, first came into existence in 1956. Brazilian scientists imported African honeybees in an attempt to breed a more productive strain of bees in South America. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, it really is like straight out of science fiction, that story. Uh, however, the imported well, bees escaped. escaped the lab. Soon jailbreak bees bred with European honeybees in the area wah, and created wah, the wah, hybrid wah, killer wah. bees. The name suggests a remorseful species, which is accurate. They're said to be more aggressive than the European honeybees. Killer bees have been known to hunt a perceived threat for up to a quarter of a mile. When they believe their nest is in danger, killer bees react a lot more quickly and in more numbers than normal bees. On the yeah, so that's the thing here is that these honeybees, the Africanized honeybees will just sting you in more numbers of bees. So it's not like each bee has a more potent venom or the venom load is more, really none of that. It's just the fact that you have more bees going after you that you're more likely to get stung more and the more stings you have, the more venom is being injected into you and so the more problems you're gonna have. Plus side, the killer bees are smaller than most bees though, and as a result, they don't contain as much venom individually. But their vast numbers soon make up for that. Stung humans can get dizziness, pain, headaches, rashes, and nausea from the venom. In more serious cases, it can lead to respiratory distress and renal issues. All of that can 
happen with regular honeybees as well. So it's not so much like the venom that's the problem in this case, it's the behavior of this particular Africanized honeybee. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes! We talked a little bit about this last time. They transmit a ton of diseases, including malaria, which is most dangerous. These little critters can be found all over the world. However, they can be most commonly found in tropical regions. Mosquitoes don't possess a painful sting per se, but the sting can cause a lot of issues for people. Mosquitoes are considered one of the most dangerous insects on the planet. After all, they have been harbingers of disease. As they go from person to person to bite, they can also infect said person with a serious illness from someone before. Malaria, West Nile virus, Zika virus, and dengue fever are just a handful of serious Chicken fever, chicken gunya, West Nile virus. I'm sure there's like, there's a lot. Various diseases mosquitoes can spread. Hundreds of millions of people all over the world contract a mosquito-borne disease every single year. And malaria is really dangerous, especially in children. And lots of children die every year from malaria. It's really, really sad. And that's why there is so much research going into understanding malaria, understanding the disease vectors, understanding mosquito biology, and trying to develop any kind of insecticide we can to target and kill mosquitoes because it's, it's a big problem. But on the bright side, not every species of mosquito is a carrier of a nasty disease. Yes, good point. There are about 2,500 species of mosquito. One of my favorites, <laughs> I have a favorite mosquito, is this really pretty purple one with like these little pom-poms off its legs. It's really, really pretty. If you feel unwell after a nibble from a mosquito, go and seek medical advice. That's a good point. If you are feeling unwell and you've been in an area with tropical diseases, go to your doctor, tell them where you've been, tell them what diseases are possibly in the area. A lot of that information you can find on the CDC website and just like let them know. Because a lot of the times what happens is people will visit like South America or Africa or somewhere and come back and because that disease isn't in the United States and like didn't tell their doctor that they had traveled, like it's just not on the doctor's radar to even think to check for it. So always tell your doctor where you've been and possibly what disease are in that area. They'd probably know too, but just, you know, cover all your bases. Just to be on the safe side. Driver ant. The driver ant's main claim to fame came in the form of Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. While the events of that scene are exaggerated, it still gives us a decent idea of what these beasts are actually I mean, are if you want to use the word exaggerated to mean, like, completely not true, <laughs> sure. I should do a whole React series on just, like, how insects are portrayed in movies. Let me know if you'd like that. I feel like, I feel like I'd have lots of things to say. Love. Driver ants, also known as doorless, are mostly found in Central and East Africa and certain parts of Asia. Driver ants also have the biggest colony in the world. Often there will be 22 million of the ants in their nest. If that's not concerning enough, the species are known to consume anything edible in their path. If an unsuspecting insect or small animal enters their path, well, soon they'll find themselves swarmed by the ants. That's pretty interesting because it's this really interesting example of convergent evolution where we have two completely different lines of ants living in completely different areas. So you have the driver ants in Africa and you also have you know, army ants in South America and they're all kind of under this umbrella term of army ants and the fact that they you know do these swarms or these trails and they do these raids and just kind of attack everything in their path it's really interesting that we see that behavior evolve a couple times over in completely unrelated species Driver ants do have stingers, like most ants, however, it's their bites that are used more often. The bites will be so strong that some tribes in Africa will use driver ants to help suture wounds. So the ants that they're showing here are soldiers of the genus Isetan, which are only found in South America, and these ones are very traditionally used for sutures. And that is because of how the soldiers' mandibles like look and how they grip onto the organism. I've seen these before, you can click the card, there's images here. But this is that group of Isetan, very commonly used in South America to suture wounds among indigenous populations. And this genus is only found in South America and not in Africa. So this, what they're showing, and describing is not aligning properly.
They force the ants to bite down on either side of the wound and then pull the ant away, leaving only the head embedded. The driver ants are able to plan and coordinate their attacks, almost as though they're part of some hive mind. If you see a swarm of large ants, probably best to run the other way. Yeah, so they coordinate these attacks using trail pheromones. And because the ants can't really see, like I was mentioning, most of the communication is done tactilely, so touching them or through pheromones, like through different, like for example, this one's trail pheromones, that's how they all follow each other. So that's how they're doing their coordination. That's just the way that they communicate. Asp caterpillar. An asp. We talked a little bit about this caterpillar in the last week's video, so I might just kind of like skip over this one. Um, but this is in the same group with the flannel moth or the pus caterpillars. These are a whole family of caterpillars. They all have these little hairs like this. They all can sting you. It leaves rashes. It leaves burns. It, they do really hurt. Underneath their magnificent hair are... I feel like this image that he's using is a little bit misleading. It's not the underside of the caterpillar. So that big kind of like brown thing like right here, that's its head. These are the legs that are going to turn into the moth, like little six legs like you might imagine moths have. And then down here, these are the pro legs, which are little like, caterpillar suction cup species. The underneath of the caterpillar is actually relatively okay. I mean, I still wouldn't recommend picking it up or anything, but that's not the part that's going to sting you. It's all those hairs in there. Those hairs are venomous. They have venomous spines in them. It's that, it's the fluff. It's the fluff that gets you. If you see that hairy blob in the wild, definitely don't go pet it. Yeah, definitely go, don't, do not touch the hairy caterpillars. Bullet ant. We're now at one of the most painful insect stings. Yeah, so we talked about the bullet ant last week. We talked about it a lot already here too, so I'm probably just gonna skip this one. Asian giant hornet. A I've talked about this twice already. Asian giant hornets are, as the name states, rather big. On average, their body is almost five centimeters in length. Just take a look at this picture. This picture is of a toy. <laughs> this isn't a real, this isn't a real arthropod. So if you just take two seconds to like actually look at this, you can tell how plasticky it looks. You see like the joints on the wings, there's like little knobs. Also, like, what are these wings? They are obviously just plastic. It's the easiest way to tell fake photos is that real insects use their real wings to do real things like fly. So they have oh, this wing venation that's clearly there for like structural support that you can see in the real organism versus this, which is a toy. Come on. <laughs> I feel like we were doing so well at the beginning of this video and like if this video gets to a thousand likes I will make my own scientifically fact-based 10 most dangerous insects so if you want that be sure to smash that like button and share with your friends kissing bug we talked about this last week as well the kissing bug finally we have the cutely named and we talked about this this is the same footage that the other video used, which is not <laughs> a triatomine. If you are new, if you didn't watch last week's video, the triatomine is the kissing bug proper that can actually transmit Chagas disease. This beautiful arthropod is not that. Thing bug, also known as the triatomine, or this one is not a triatomine. This one is not. No, go home. Vampire bug, these critters are found in warm climates, especially in Central America and the southern states of the U.S. They get their adorable nickname because of where they bite people. As they're attracted to carbon dioxide, the kissing bug will bite humans around the mouth okay. as- Okay! Oh my god. Oh my god. You can see this arthropod isn't feeding on blood. This assassin bug is eating an insect. Look, you can see its butt and you can see its leg of the prey item it's eating they sleep they can be as large this as this one is a triatomine two and a half centimeters kissing bugs can be this found one in is cracks not around this one is a triatomine you can tell because of the the head that it has that kind of long extended head is pretty indicative of that subfamily it's what some of the kissing bugs carry that's the main concern. Like mosquitoes, they often infect people with disease. In particular, the parasitic infection Chagas disease. Mm -hmm. It's estimated that 8 million people in Central and South America have contracted Chagas. However, it is okay, rare for- Okay, okay. 
Smithsonian. So they got this footage from the Smithsonian. All right, come on. Let's let's look this one up. We're getting like two for one. While he may look comical with his strange long nose, the assassin bug is no laughing matter. Imagine talking about like tigers this way. You know, like This freak has the ability to literally liquefy um, his prey. There are like several thousand species of assassin bugs. Uh, like cats are freaks by sheer numbers. His red color is not just for show. It's a warning to other predators. It's called aposematic coloration. With antennae as long as his body, he sniffs out his next meal. And his needle-like beak can inflict a painful sting. So, a lot of people will talk about, like, oh, it's injecting venom, is it a sting? Or is it a bite? And my take on it is that if it's coming from the mouth, it bites you. Stingers are on the back end of your hymenopter and your bees, ants, and your wasps. It delivers venom. It's a sting. You would never say, I got stung by a rattlesnake because the teeth are, which is in the mouth, is what's delivering the venom, right? So this is the mouth. It is delivering venom through the mouth. It is a bite. <laughs> or I'm going to start saying that rattlesnakes stung people. Once a tasty meal has been targeted, the silent assassin grabs hold. Yeah, so this is a, a bug feeder. This is this is not once he finds a This is not going to hurt you whatsoever. It's not gonna bite you in the middle of the night. It's not gonna deliver shotguns. This is not the right species. A soft spot. He stabs his blade-like proboscis into his victim. These sound effects are hilarious, by the way. Within seconds, the prey is paralyzed and its insides begin to dissolve. The proboscis pierces the victim's gut, injecting a lethal cocktail of enzymes and digestive juices. This venomous saliva destroys everything in its path. This is extra oral digestion, which we talked about a little bit last video. Turning the cells into soup. Once the bug puree is ready, the assassin slurps it all up. Yeah, so there you go. A little bit about the not kissing bug, just assassin bugs in general. The kissing bug to pass on this disease. Luckily, there are many factors that need to line up in order for the infection to work on humans. The first factor that needs to line up is that you're actually bitten by the right species. <laughs> not, not this one. And that's it. We feel a little itchy after making this video. Do you know any other insects that have dangerous bites or stings that we didn't list? If so... Again, with this list, like, the disease vector should be way higher on the list. Like, this one was the last one. But the mosquito, which actually kills more people than any other arthropod or even other animals, is, like, in the middle of the list for no reason. Like... And then you have painful stings, which is not the same thing as damaging and toxic stings. Let me know if you want my list. Make it happen. Thousand likes on this video. Share with your friends. Share with your not friends. Well, my intellectually curious love bugs, thank you so much for watching another react video where we like clean up some BS on the internet. I had had hopes for this list. Like we started off on a good note and then I don't know, it's like kind of just like kept going downhill from there so yeah let me know what you guys liked if there's any other videos like this that you think i should react to feel free to leave them in the comments or message me on social media i'd be happy to take a look at them well lovely love bugs that's it for me and i will see you next week bye also here Here's a video recommended to you by the YouTube algorithm, but here's another video in this playlist. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the things.